Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can add a new overhead light source in Lightroom to relight a photograph in an interesting way. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. I'm going to show you the starting image here and then we're going to have a look at the final image. This is just a shot into an old courtyard in Vienna and it's a fairly lackluster image but let's have a look at what we can do with it. What I've done is essentially brought in a darkening effect around the entrance to this courtyard and then lit the courtyard from above and we're going to see how to do that and how to pick up highlight areas and give the image a different look. So now we know where we're going, let's go back and let's get started on the process. We're going to start working on a duplicate of the original image which I have open here and I'm going to first make some adjustments to the image. I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit to make it a little bit more gritty, a little bit more contrasty. Now I'm going to decrease my highlights and make them a little bit darker and increase my shadows. This is a sort of faux HDR look and it's going to give us the starting gritty point for our image. Then I'm going to bring my whites down a little bit because I'm going to lighten things up again in a minute and my blacks up. And again this is this sort of faux HDR look. Increase clarity, increase vibrance and add a little bit of saturation. So virtually just throwing everything at this image. And then for the tone curve I'm going to open this up and I'm going to go for a strong contrast. So there's the starting point for the image. The only thing I want to do before I start going and fine tuning this effect is I want to knock out some of the blue. This image is looking a little bit blue to me so I'm going to take the white balance tool here and I'm just going to find something that is a little off in the blue channel. I don't want to go to this really blue area, I want to go to something that's just a bit off and just adjust using it. Well it looks like I've got a bit of a high powered effect there so let's just put that back and I can cool the image down a little bit by just dragging on the temperature. So I want a little bit of a cooler look but not all the way back to the blue that we had originally. Now we're going to start working with the graduated filter. So I'm going to click here on the graduated filter and I'm going to bring one in from this side of the image. Now I want a fairly long transition for this so I'm going to start by clicking fairly close to the edge of the image and just drag it out. So this is where it's going to be applied at full strength and it's going to dissipate until it reaches this line. And we want less exposure so I'm just going to back off the exposure there. I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit and a little bit of extra clarity and perhaps even a little bit of extra saturation just to get a nice effect there. Now I'm thinking that the graduated filter is just not working quite the way I want it to look. So I'm just going to bump the exposure up a little bit higher and click done. And that's going to lead our eye into this area of the image but we need to get rid of this wall here because right now it's slap bang in our face. So again I'm going to drag to create a graduated filter here. I'm going to tip it a bit on an angle and I'll probably just close it up a little bit too. And again bring the exposure down on this. Add a bit of clarity maybe a little bit of saturation. Now when I kick the saturation up I get some good saturated colors here but I'm getting some blue in up here. Well, I'm going to deal with that in just a minute but I'm going to add a bit of contrast too. Not worried about this area of the image which has sort of been left out because I'm going to capture that with another graduated filter in a minute. And finally a graduated filter down from the top here. And again same thing, I'm going to decrease the exposure on this. And it's really giving me blue problems up here. Increase the contrast a little bit, maybe a bit of extra clarity, maybe a bit of extra saturation and click done. Now I want to darken this edge a little bit which I'll probably have to do using an adjustment brush. So I'll click to create my adjustment brush setting here. I'm going to press the letter O so I can see where I'm painting. That's just showing me my mask. Press the letter O again to hide the mask and just going to 
see if I can bring a bit more of an adjustment in here now you can see that the edges of this adjustment are really really obvious well I can make them less obvious by going to the eraser kick the flow down a little bit increase the size of it feather the edge of it and just run along the very edge of this mask to make it a bit softer so I'm on a raise here and I'm just softening the edge of the mask press the letter O to go back to the image and just make sure that the effect is being blended in and it's not going to be obvious that we threw an adjustment brush setting at the image now we need to get rid of this blue and again the adjustment brush I'm going to feather it a bit quite a bit reasonable amount of flow and a little bit bigger brush I can adjust the brush size by hitting the square bracket key on the keyboard and there's a bit of blue in here too few bits through there so I don't want to adjust the exposure at this point but I do want to get rid of the blue now I can get rid of the blue a few ways but probably the easiest way is just on this temperature slider because this is a blue yellow slider drag it to the left it adds blue drag it to the right and it adds yellow I just want to stop short of too much of an effect here let's go in here now that I can see what effect I'm having I can just click on those areas that appear to be just a little bit too blue and click done the other way of course to have killed the blue would be to have just added some yellow color back into the image but I think that's a good effect now we're ready to turn our attention to this area here which is the area we want to light already we've got a sort of lit look to it but we can enhance that look and we're going to do that again with an adjustment brush we'll need to do the adjustment brush because there's no tool that gives us this shape element unless we use an adjustment brush so I'm going to use a fairly high flow I'm going to start by auto masking bring my feather all the way down and probably adjust my brush size down a little bit click to pin this adjustment brush setting in and now I'm just going to use the auto mask tool to get the edges of this lit area and once I've got a pretty good start I can press the letter O to see just how it's looking and then I can go back and do things like erasing the edges in this case I'm going to want a fairly hard edge here and probably a reasonable flow on my eraser just size my eraser brush down now you're going to be a little bit more careful than I am of these edges but because this is going to be the difference between light and not light we want it to be fairly accurate in our adjustment so you want to make a pretty good mask here I'm just going to press the letter O now I've got increased exposure on this adjustment brush so I'm just going to bring it back down to no increase at all and let's just pop it up a smidgen and let's add some color into this light I'm thinking at this stage a little bit of a sort of yellowy color would be good if that's too much we can always just drop the saturation down maybe a bit of extra clarity see where taking the highlights up or down is helping us well we can lighten it a little bit by taking the highlights up they are actually responding here and perhaps even lighten the shadows a little bit more contrast will always help give that gritty look and clarity of course and maybe even a little bit of saturation the only thing I don't want to do is get too much blue in here let's press the letter O just to see what's happening here um, let's go back to the brush not the eraser and let's just bring in these extra areas just make sure we've got all this area in here selected press the letter O so okay I'm reasonably happy with that so I'm going to click done I'm going to go back and add some light streaks again by using the adjustment brush again by using a fairly small size brush a little bit smaller even than it is at the moment I'm going to add quite a bit of feather to it I'm going to click to pin it down here 
and then I'm just going to drag down to brush it down and I'm going to add about three rays of light. Now the straighter those rays of light are the better. So let's just press the letter O. Mine are a bit wiggly but you can persevere and make yours a little bit straighter. I just want to get a little bit of variety in the light here. Again if you go over the edge just erase that back off again. Press the letter O to hide the mask and we've got quite a bit of extra exposure there, probably too much. So I'm just going to back that off a little bit. Maybe add a little bit more contrast here and perhaps even a bit of extra clarity. Just to again reinforce this sort of light effect here. May even also come in here and add a bit of colour into this. Obviously this is way too much colour but we can always back off our saturation here. Actually let's go for a bit more of a yellow. And click done. Now if I wanted to I could remove some of the blue here and I really think I'm going to have to because it's really getting in the way. So I'm just going to again another adjustment brush, auto mask, click on here and let's go and see if we can kill some of this blue. Press the letter O to see that we're getting the selection in the right place. Press the letter O again to hide it. We don't want added exposure but we do want to kill the blue by just warming this up a little bit. And let's click done. Now I see that I've just missed some area there. So if you miss some area with your selection you can click back on the adjustment brush, click on its pin to reselect it and now we can add to it. it. Seems like this was off the bottom of the screen when I did that fix. So I've just adjusted that a little bit and click done. So now before I finish I'm just concerned to add some highlights because if the sun was streaming down from overhead then this window ledge, the top of this window and some elements around here would be catching the light. So let's go in here and let's go another hit with this adjustment brush. You can pile up as many adjustment brush settings as you like so don't think that we're overdoing this at all. I've seen people do a lot more than these. So I'm just going to grab the areas where I think that the light would be hitting and just kick them up a little bit. Now you see that I've actually taken this into overexposed and we've got some highlight clipping warnings happening but that's fine because we can just back off the exposure in a minute. If you go over the edge just erase it but I'm just going to tip on a few of these places where I think that the sun might hit. It's going to hit here. It's probably going to hit on some of these metal objects as well. And these are sort of metal poles and obviously across the windowsill here. Now you're going to do a much more careful fix than I have here but let's just zoom back out again and let's take the exposure down a little bit. We want them to be lighter, we want to get the sense that the light is actually hitting these spots but we don't want to be blowing things out so I'm just going to click done. So now let's have a look at the before and after. This is the image that we started with and it's sort of lacklustre tonally. I know that there's darks on one side and lights on the other but there really is no sense of real excitement and I think that even an image like this deserves something a little better than that. So here is the final result. We've given it a grittier look and we've been able to add some overhead lighting and giving it a nicer and more charming appearance. So again here's the before and here's the after adding an overhead light source in Lightroom. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released.
and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.